really got his attention was in his interaction with Susie. He had a deep voice that somehow didn't match his youthful features, and he spoke with a measured gentleness. He didn't throw his weight around or demand a freebie or speak in a condescending tone. David must have stared at him too hard because the guy in the queue had taken notice. David had shot him a look that he hoped was not at all creepy and then decided to help him out. For standing in line for almost 15 minutes, the guy in the queue deserved that sticker sheet. <laughs> Of course, Susie had been onto David from the get-go. Nothing ever got past that girl. Yes, Tito was checking out the cute guy. Guilty as charged. David was a sucker for awkward, boyish-looking men who looked after the K-pop fans in their lives. What can he say? David entered his go-to ramen place and scanned the floor. This being a weekend, the crowd wasn't too bad, and he waited to be led to his seat. When he sat down at his table and glanced over to the booth next to his, he wanted to laugh. It was the guy from the queue. Arranged beside him in his seat were several paper and plastic bags, the contents of which were scattered on a table in front of him. He was examining the goods with his eyes squinted, as though struggling to read the Korean text printed on the packaging. Maybe it was a combination of the soft lighting in the restaurant that was hitting the stranger's face in the most flattering way. The fact that David was almost dizzy with hunger and the overall good, good vibes of the day that compelled him to do what he did next. Before he could even think himself out of it, David found himself saying, I didn't take you for a K-pop fan earlier. The guy from the queue glanced up and looked over at David. His eyes grew large. He must have recognized David from the coffee shop. Then, oh, he said setting down the items and putting them back inside the plastic bags. Uh, these are my sisters. She's into XO2, David said. The guy from the queue looked at the pile of fan goods around him and laughed. <laughs> he liked the way that laugh sounded and wanted to hear more of it. Unfortunately, the guy from the queue said. Among other groups. David nodded his head in understanding. Of course, he said. That sounds just like my niece. What does she call it? Uh, David searched for the word Susie used to describe herself as a fan. Um, a multi-fandom. The guy from the queue supplied. David snapped his fingers and pointed at him. The guy from the queue gave him a toothy smile. Then he said, Uh, I'm Kiko. And David. <laughs> Kiko started looking as though he had he just realized something. Uh, David, da David Padalian, he said. Wow, should I be nervous you know my full name without me telling you? Uh, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, uh, Kika said. It's just that um, I did the editing on your company AVP. David's instincts at the mention of company AVP was to stiffen his back and to sit up a little straighter. Anything that reminded him of work made him snap back into being Office David. It kind of sucked. I hope you were happy with it, Kika said. David nodded. I was. Nothing followed, and the air went static between them. A server came to take David's order, making the situation a little less awkward. If the conversation ends this way, I guess I'll leave him alone. I'll just sit here, he'll just sit there, and we'll eat our ramen. Separately. <laughs> David wished with all his heart that the conversation wouldn't end there. It was Kiko who spoke first. Hey, who, who came up with your tagline? Kiko said. That was my favorite part. David was more handsome in person than he was on the video. His hair had been done up in a severe, almost senatorial way on the AVP, and he was wearing glasses with frames that made him look middle-aged. <laughs> David had his hair down now, and under the warm lighting of the ramen restaurant, it looked so soft and shiny. He looked 
younger too, without his glasses. <laughs> he could have gotten away with being mistaken for a college kid. His skin was impeccable. Korean drama actor level of impeccable. Kiko noticed that he was very fair and blushed rather easily. When he smiled, his cheeks reminded Kiko of Fuji apples. David did a lot of smiling as the conversation veered towards his niece's K-pop obsession. It was bizarre connecting with someone else about K-pop, and yet, it made complete sense. We're the guys who love the girls who love K-pop, David said. They have us wrapped around their fingers. So, how far down the rabbit hole are you? Kiko shook his head. Um, <laughs> I have stuff in my head I don't even need. <laughs> it's like waking up one morning with the ability to speak in a language I have no recollection of learning. Just uh, like pure osmosis. David furrowed his brow. Like the Korean language? Or he wasn't sure he was following what Kiko was saying. More like, um, I know enough for my sister to get me to queue for her during fan events and uh, hold my own in case I get asked the fandom related question. Like, height differences between popular K-pop ships, he said. Which, by the way, I can't take credit for. <laughs> How did you know what the correct answer was? My niece made me help her set up the randomizer app for the questions. <laughs> and said, well, <laughs> thanks to you, I don't look like a comp complete idiot, Kiko said. Then he remembered that he had something bigger to thank David for. If it wasn't for David, his sister wouldn't have a ticket to the concert. He didn't mention this though. Instead, he rummaged through Kairos Hall and pulled out an ID lanyard with a laminated photo card of Chan Beck already attached to it. Sorry, sis, but he did give you that ticket. A token for a token of my appreciation, he said, presenting David with it. Oh. David glanced down at the photo card attached to the lanyard. And thank you, Chan Beck, wherever you are. <laughs> he wound the lanyard cord around the photo card before putting it inside his pocket. You know, if I'm not mistaken, they're on the concert grounds right this very minute. Hey, you're right. You want to go check it out? We could hang outside the area. <laughs> at the risk of looking like complete predators? <laughs> no, thank you, Kiko said. As soon as he said this, he wished he'd phrased it differently. He didn't want to send the message of wanting to call it a day. No, just the opposite, in fact. He was enjoying himself with David. However, K-popocalypse had barely started, and the idea of simply hanging about outside the concert grounds didn't exactly appeal to him. I mean, I, I, I don't want to be <laughs> Team Labas at the K-popocalypse, you know? How sad. It was David's turn to laugh. <laughs> what was that? Team Labas? Yeah, it's uh, what you call those people standing around just outside a concert venue while the concert is happening, Kiko said, grimacing. Pathetic. You're right, David said, cringing. That's not my style either. His face lit up a moment after as though coming to an obvious decision. Then we should get tickets, he said, trying not to sound too excited at the thought. <coughs> God. More K-pop. <laughs> Are you serious? Kiko said, chewing on his bottom lip. David put his hand over his chest and Kiko's heart did a little flip at how earnest he looked. My treat, he said. Come on, it'll be fun. What is it with K-pop and why does it refuse to let me go? <laughs> you could be my K-pop fandom translator and, and give me a play-by-play. -play. Uh, I can't believe I'm doing this, Kiko said, shaking his head. David raised his arms and pantomimed, shooting a basketball, making a swishing noise and hissing, yes, in victory. My first K-pop concert, David said, <laughs> <laughs> well, how old are you? Kiko teased, his simmering giddiness boiling over to full-blown, undeniable excitement. Mine too. It's my first one too. <laughs> Shipping included. <laughs> Wait, the niece sees it.